We're doing the question and answer period time. It's been a while, I know, but uh, better late than never, as they say. I'm sitting on the old IQR here, still waiting for a clutch from a friend. Anyway, that's coming. Uh, not quite sure why. Maybe we're going to do some racing because the weather is so bad right now. And I'm sure most of you guys are seeing it right from uh, central Canada and the United States all the way out east. They got a little bit of snow out east recently, but everything else in between, man, it's being hammered hard. Oh, I drove through a rainstorm today. And we're talking like May kind of rain, like May showers, like just ridiculous stuff. Might switch gears up a little bit, get the fanners going and uh, maybe just do some racing here, try to get a bunch of, uh, try to recover this season. Hopefully all the ski hills will have uh, enough snow, Batawa, Calabogie, and some other local events. We can have some fun. But it's question and answer time. This one comes from Racing KL77. Hey Lewis, I'm responsible of Skidoo powertrain parts at our manufacturer near the motherland of Valcourt, Quebec. Like some of the sprocket in the chain case, the whole driven pulley and most of the shafts. Cool to see where it breaks sometimes. It keeps us aware there is someone driving the machine and quality is so important. Keep up the good work. What he is referring to is my Rev 827 when I broke the shaft, the axle shaft, the drive axle. That's what he's referring to. Hey, thanks for watching. I, uh, I appreciate that as well. Owen 05 1000, I think Keeley really likes Skittles. He does. He likes Skittles a lot. Uh, but he's been driving that, he drove that 450 snow bike recently, and I'm telling you, I think we'll see a snow bike in Keeley's future. Uh, Revision Mark ZZ. Anyone know how not to blow so many belts? I have an old 3 Polaris XC500. Yes, your belts are, are your uh, clutches are probably not aligned. Um, you also might want to take a look at your clutches themselves. If it's an 03, if you haven't done any work on them recently, you might want to get in there and take a look. If your clutches really aren't up to snuff, you can feel them. Take a good rip, rip like you usually rip. Put your hand on the clutches, see if one is hot, hotter than the other. Actually do this, go for a short rip, reach in, see if one clutch is hotter than the other. Then go for, a, if there's really, if you don't notice a difference, then go for a little longer, give it a good rip, and then see if one is hotter than the other. That'll generally give you a good indication of, uh, of something, of an issue. If one of your clutches is hotter, it means you're getting some more belt slippage on there and you need to address that. You know, why is that happening? And if your clutches aren't aligned, you're gonna get some big time belt heat in there and things are gonna, not be so good for you. You're going to go through belts. I'm suspecting that you have either an alignment issue or you need um, some clutching work. Um, Andrew Gregorash. Trail condi this is in respect to my uh, RMK. It is overheating. I call it overheating, running up 144, sometimes hotter than that. And I think it's because my thermostat, well, I know it's I'm pretty sure it's because my thermostat fell apart. A little clip went inside the impeller and it chewed it all apart. It's just not getting the cooling that it should. Andrew says, uh, trail conditions make a huge difference. Scratchers are a must. I have two sets of scratchers on my sled right now just to kind of, I don't want to have to pull that motor out right now and to get at it, but I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. But I do have two sets of scratchers on it. He says, my 2017 Assault runs at 126 to 130 with scratchers on hard packed ice trail. That's kind of what my... Um, RMK was running. I, actually, RMK doesn't have the front cooler, so it would run a little warmer than that. It's, it's not a, doesn't like trail, especially hard pack ice. Um, he also said that we lost all the good snow in Manitoba. You bet, buddy, we're losing it everywhere. It's, um, it's working against us this year. That's the way it is. Austin Pietro, do you play, plan on making a trip out to my camp, out to my camp, anytime soon? Love the videos. No. Not so far. And the main reason is because of the snow conditions. It's about a 60 mile uh, trip in there. And uh, like I said, my sled's overheating, so it's, it's not gonna be going into my camp. We had really good snow in the, at the start of the season. We were heading in there and that's when the clutch blew on this. Been a bad season, boys. I don't wanna sound like a complainer, but I blew the axle on the A27, blew the clutch off on this. That uh, RMK is overheating. Um, I came down with a wicked brutal flu of some sort. I don't even know what that was. Some kind of bug from 
Asia or something got me. And uh, it's just been kind of crazy, you know, the, the, the crank is done on that Indy Light and oh my God, oh, that's fun though. I just got the boondock, I, I, I digress. I just got the, the Boondocker uh, Sidekick X package for that um, RMK of mine. It's going to be putting out a lot more boost now. So hopefully we can get in the races and uh, it's going to rip hard. I know it's going to be pretty fun. I'm not even going to fix the cooling issue. I'm going to do that this summer probably. I'm just going to hook that kid up and go. Uh, Dan Robinson, or Robinson. Nice videos, keep them coming. I just wonder why people put a turbo on a sled and then go on to ride areas that clearly do not need them. LOL, snow depth looks pretty skinny and pretty flat there. You need to ride out in BC with that thing. <clears throat> There's no doubt about it. I do need to ride in BC. That still might happen this year. We're not quite sure yet. But who, I would never tell anybody they don't need power or more power in their sled. Man, you know, um, there are times when you want that extra power and you know what, I got it. It's there at my fingertips or at my thumb tip and I love it. There were times where uh, when we were only running 50 horsepower sleds and people were saying, no, you don't need any more power than that. And then there's 110 horsepower. Yo, you don't need any more power than that. And now we're up over, you know, 180, 190, 200 horsepower. Yeah, you can always use more. Um, that's what we're all about here. At least that's what I am about. It's fun. Um, but I love the fanners, I love the 50 horsepower sleds too. Flag of hate. Why, any would build, why anyone would build a snow bike without e-start is beyond me. <clears throat> no doubt about it, man. They need e-start. Mr. Roboto, 4321. What do you adjust your limiter strap to? I don't adjust my limiter straps. Everybody tries to adjust their limiter straps, it seems to make the front end wheelie. It's the snow conditions, the amount of power, and pretty much the clutching um, that sort of determine your ability to wheelie. Um, that's all I can say about that. If you have a 340, it's going to be hard to wheelie that beast. Um, if you're adjusting your limiter strap, it's kind of, the sled's kind of wheeling and your strap is kind of staying out or down on the, on the ground. It is what it is, boys. Just ride your sleds and have some fun. Dern Becker, Becker. Put that track system on a Mako two-stroke. He's talking about the 450 snow bike. Mako, Mako 700 two-stroke. Now you've got your power. No doubt about it. That would be a powerful beast. Um, but you still have to change gears. Don't like that. I'm not complaining about changing gears, but I just don't think you should have to do it when you're playing in the snow. Wouldn't it make it much better if uh, you didn't have to change gears? My opinion. Crazy Cayman. You lucky beaver, I think he means Canadian. I dropped my sled off the mechanic because it was cutting out and he ended up in, and he ended up in the hospital with a heart issue and I haven't seen my sled all winter just to find out it was a power valve. Yeah, that's too bad, bud. You look at it yourself next time. Maybe you can determine that, I don't know. Domster 1988, what kind of can does Skittles 2.0 have? Sounds good, darn right it sounds good. It's a Jaws can. Uh, we were running with some boys the other day with a bunch of cans from other kinds of companies and that Skittles can, it's, uh, you can't even talk over it. It's funny. It's awesome. It sounds really good through the bush. Forest Timberworks Limited. Being a good Canadian supporter, following you and liking what you are doing. You need to mix it up a little by adding some music, some commentary, mail time, and somehow to all in one video, keep your views and subscribers climbing. Keep up the awesome work. Yeah, we're almost 100,000 uh, subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I uh, just want to hit that 100,000 mark. Uh, that would be pretty fun, right? Uh, we might have a giveaway coming up too to try to help us get there. Motorfist online. Sounds good. I appreciate the support everybody gives me. I try to do as much as I can, but don't forget I do have several other jobs and we're all busy. All the guys are busy. It's hard to get time to do all this fun stuff. Uh, Articat for life. Louie, by any chance did you go by the Wolf's Inn when you were in the Upper Peninsula? Because I saw the same suit and you were wearing and a Yamaha snow bike. Yes, I believe we were at the Wolf's Inn. Pretty sure. I think that's where we stopped in with the boys from Boondock Nation. One of the fellas there, um, uh, Dylan, Dylan Rose, he also has the same suit as me and a Turbo RMK. Um, S. Jeff's Oogla. Hi. Uh, you need more videos of the skitter. 
It's so awesome and I love it. I know, it is awesome. We're gonna make more, don't worry, it's coming. Mike Hawk says, killer suit, Louie. It is a killer suit, I love it. That Motor Fist Blitzkrieg suit is, has changed snowmobiling for me. Uh, extremely comfortable, excellent um, moderation of your body temperature in there. It's just, it's so much nicer to use that suit than a two-piece. It's really nice. Can't say much, uh, anything higher about that. It's, it is awesome. Moto Pro 440. If you see this, please answer. I have a question. What happened to Polaris XL, XLT after you blew the head gasket when it overheating on purpose? Did you rebuild it or just get rid of it? Sold it. I missed the troubleshooting. Uh, I met you at the Toronto ATV snowmobile show. I was a kid who suggested you do Yamaha Phaser Boondocker, like what you did to the XLT. Um, the XLT... We didn't blow the head gasket. I, <clears throat> I blew the head gasket, or the head gasket went on it before, before I kind of almost did power mods, just when I was sort of building the stuff. So yeah, the head gasket went and I replaced it. Then I did a bunch of testing with it. Didn't blow the head gasket on it with the Evans coolant. We ran it up to 330 degrees. Uh, then I more or less parted that machine out. I still have some pieces, I think. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Um, no, just moved on. That's it. What happened to the uh, 700 Deluxe? I still have everything for it here. Pretty much everything. And I do want to make a water skipper out of it. That's my plan. A lot of it's on the, like, on the rev. Yeah, there are parts on the rev. and yeah, But I have mostly everything I need. I have the engine and all that stuff. Um, Danuk Pandas. What plane is that engine from? That's my jet engine. That is from, it's a motorlet. Uh, M701 engine, and it's out of a, del is it out of a Delphin? Yeah, it's out of a Delphin, um, it's out of a, yeah, a Delphin, it's, a, it's like a, um, it's out of a Delphin jet fighter trainer. It's like a Cold War era um, Eastern Bloc, you know, Russian, Ukrainian, Romanian kind of jet. Uh, the equivalent of a a uh, kind of a, like a tutor. It kind of looked like an F5 or an A5 or whatever they call them. Yep. Yep, yep. Um, Jim Rowlings. Jim, he always comments on the videos. I appreciate you coming by, Jim. Um, when are you going to get back to the Big Bory land build? Uh, well, you know what? I tried to do it today, but I'm missing a couple of key parts for the uh, engine rebuild. We're, we're doing the 925 Big Bore. So, um, yeah. Those parts will be in by next Tuesday, and then we're back to the motor. I've got the tunnel for it out in my truck. It is massively long. It's pretty funny. Um, so yeah, soon. I want to be able to have it, hopefully, for at least one of the races at the end of the year. Fly uh, Flexi Flexi's EU. You are a effing dick. You know that. I was so excited to see how that'll land with Turbo would be, and then to realize it sounded like a Polaris, and then read the comments it was fake, and I realized it, and uh, that's how he spelled it, A-A-A-E-R-E-R-A-E-R-G-G-G-H, dot, 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 dot. Yeah, well, you know, I was having fun with that video. Of course, I didn't put a uh, 200 horsepower uh, boondocker turbocharged engine in the Elan, which, <laughs> That would be silly. Of course, I would only go with 195 <laughs> horse, non-turbocharged. I just made that video for fun. I've been making some kind of weird videos. People are kind of wondering what kind of drugs I'm on. I'm not on any drugs. It's the way that things have been. It's been really funny. I've been talking to a lot of people about a lot of different aspects of snowmobiling, snowmobiling from uh, you know different sleds and horsepower and uh, stuff that they've been modding on them. And then, we, you know, we, I, we've been doing a lot of traveling this winter, trying to find good snow. And whenever we ask somebody, you know, how much snow do you have? Oh, we have three feet of fresh pow. And when we get there and there's maybe just eight inches or 10 inches, there, there's a difference between three feet of fresh powder and 10 inches of snow. So I've just been, just been having fun with, uh, with, uh, with that and, and the exaggerating of things. Um, when you say that snow is up to your handlebars, this is handlebars. Okay, now I don't know, okay, well, I'm, admittedly, these are high handlebars. The Indy Light, they're not even that high, but that, if you say they're up to the handlebars, 
that would mean that when you're driving through the snow, that snow is rolling up over your handlebars, not driving on top of handlebar high snow. Like we have three feet of snow here right now, it's rock hard. I wouldn't tell you that we had three feet of handlebar high snow. I would say we have rock hard snow and there's no powder on top of it. So it's, it's funny, I'm just making a lot of stuff up and, uh, and uh, we've been having fun here with the exaggerating of snow depths, if you will. I'm not calling anybody out, it's just the way it is. People want to ride and I have no problem with that. If, but if you want to ride, just say, yeah, the snow conditions aren't that great, but come on out, let's go ride. And, you know, that's kind of what I'm into. Carson Ewald, do you ever have problems with your crankshaft? Not until today. <laughs> Not until I worked on the 340. Uh, yeah, I got a couple of bearings that are bad on it. But very rarely, like in these machines here, yeah, no, no, uh, no problems that I've come across yet. J Dyer 4066. Hey Louie, question for you. I have a 98 ZL600 that needs some needs some run strong, but I need to clean up some someone's lazy work. I know all about that. Hop on board that. 340, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, so should I make it a nice trail sled or something more fun like putting the drivetrain in a vintage sled or long track the sled? A ZL600. You know what, it depends on what, uh, a lot of, that's a kind of common question. Um, it depends on how much time and how much money and how much effort you want to put into something. I wouldn't suggest doing it at the start of the year. You know, if you're going to do something like that, take all that hardware out and put it in an old sled. Do it in the summer so it's ready for the season. You know? um, it's, you're going to run into some cost. You're going to get in there and you're going to find some things, uh, some issues. That's a heavy sled. So if you slap all that stuff into a lighter sled, it's going to be more fun. There's no doubt about it. But one of the best things and, and, and the, I'd say the biggest reasons that I have for doing all this and what you're talking about there is uh, the ability to, to do that for yourself and learn. Um, you know what, whatever you create might not be the most effective thing, but you did it yourself. You got in there and you hammered that out, you made it work, you made it fit, and you know, you and your buds sat around, probably had a couple beers while you're doing it, and you, you, you did a little bit of team building there, and it was a lot of fun. But you did it yourself, you didn't let anybody else do it, you didn't send it to a mechanic, and that's kind of what this whole thing is about. Yeah, I'm kind of stretched out to the limit here with all this stuff that I got going on, but I just can't, I just come up with ideas and we just try to make them work. And you know what, I won't fault anybody for that. And if you say, uh, Louis, you know, you think I should do this? If you got the time, you got a little bit of cash, and you got the machines, then yeah, I'd say do it, because uh, anything that sparks the old imagination is a good thing. That's what this whole thing is about, and that's what uh, keeps the old Power Mods army going. I gotta thank you guys for watching. As usual, keep coming back. Yeah, we are on to stuff. I mean, there's no snow, nothing else to do, right? So we, uh, we might as well work in here. Right now, I think I'm gonna go work on the clutches for that little Indy Light while we figure out the, the uh, crankshaft issue. Thanks for watching.